Hey, folks, my guest today is Konstantinos Kouzelis. He's a Greek born and raised in the Netherlands. He founded Greencast straight out of university to help companies measure, analyze, and report on their climate impact. The website is greencast.io. Konstantinos, you ready to take us to the top? Yep. All right. So how do you do this? Do they have to install any physical objects to do the measurement or it's all software? Yeah, so no, we're actually a carbon management software platform. We're software as a service. Um, and what we do is that we invite our customers to connect uh, their data sources, such as their accounting, their e-commerce platforms, or their HR system, CRM. Uh, we pull the data, we make the conversions and the calculations, and they get their emission impact back. What might one of these companies have on their HR system that enables you to quantify their carbon emission? Yeah, so for instance, in the HR systems, uh, we see a lot of uh, travel movements, uh, lunch expenses. Um, actually, the the activities that employees um, perform during their work, uh, which in the end all result to some sort of emissions. Mm -hmm. And what's an example of that same thing, but if they attach their e-commerce data source, what could you see there? Yeah, so for instance, for e-commerce, we see the products that uh, the companies we serve have sold. So let's say you serve a commerce, uh, well, a party that sells washing machines. Uh, the, these products do not only um, impact the environment at the moment they're produced, but also after they're sold. So for the lifetime of this washing machine, it's going to consume energy, which is going to have an impact on climate. And that's something we use um, to map the complete impact of what a business does across scope one, two, and scope three. And so when these founders want to quantify their carbon impact, what are they willing to pay you per month to use your technology right now? What's your average customer revenue? Yeah, so our customer revenues uh, range from 1 or 90 euros per month up, till, up until 1,000 plus. Um, and it's really dependent on how far your business is. Um, for startups that have raised less than 2 million in funding, we have a free plan and the rest um, above 1,000 are enterprise customers, which want to dive, well, let's say deeper into their supply chains. And what, what would, just for the paying customers, what would you say the sweet spot is? About 100, what, 250 euros a month or something like that? Uh, yeah, a bit above. I think around 300 is the, okay. the sweet spot. So about 380 United States dollars per month, something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Give me the backstory here. When did you launch the company? So I started building on the company uh, by making a clickable demo in uh, July uh, 2021. I actually started the company in September of 21. Um, and I was a one-man team with a pitch deck um, with which I raised a 400k uh, pre-seed round um, and then actually started building out the team, the product and doing sales and would close our first customers now. Uh, they're really happy and growing actually above expectations. So, How many customers sit on the platform? Yeah, so now we have around 10 customers on our platform live, uh, but the pipeline is filling up and we're actually trying to onboard as many of them as possible, but we have um, a little bit of a backlog, which we're working on. That's awesome. That, congratulations on your first 10 customers. Tell us the story of how you got the first one. Yeah, so the first one uh, was actually quite a funny story because we got some press here in the Netherlands um, through uh, a startup journal that found us, and that uh, resulted in um, yeah, quite some conversations coming inbound while our product wasn't working yet. Um, but this was a really small consulting firm somewhere from the east of the Netherlands where we didn't expect our first customers to come from, but just people that are willing to try new products and that are willing to take the leap with us. Um, yeah, that's how we started. That's amazing. Okay, so 10 customers at about $380 per month in revenue it means you're doing about $4,000 a month right now on revenue. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. 
A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity. And red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million. Seed round, 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations. Or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. And you said that you're growing fast. You have a long wait list now. How are you getting new signups today? What's the growth strategy? So the growth strategy is actually threefold. So we do uh, unbound sales. Uh, we don't do as much of that uh, as we would like to because it's quite time consuming. We have some inbound leads that we take on. But most importantly, we're trying to differentiate through our partnership proposition. So the product that we originally built is a carbon accounting uh, platform for businesses to use themselves. But we actually saw a very large pain point with sustainability consultants, which um, use hacky Excel forms and email to do their analysis. And we want to empower them by providing them with the software platform and the software tools uh, to do their work faster, more efficient, and eventually better. Hmm. Fascinating. Okay, so partnerships, outbound and inbound makes a lot of sense. What's the team size today? How many folks? Yeah, so the team size at the moment, we're with six um, and we're expanding rapidly. So we're hiring, um, which is one of the reasons that we can't focus as much on outbound sales at the moment. We need to make our trade-offs. And Constantino, uh, when you did the, uh, the pre-seed round of 400,000 bucks, was that at the traditional sort of $5 million cap? Um, yeah, so for European standards, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we had a cap and discount, let's say around five million. Yeah, interesting. And um, are you looking at raising now or no? Yeah, so we have runway for uh, quite a while now uh, to go, but we're looking How at long? raising a bit earlier. Uh, we have about 11 months left. Um, that's, yeah, so on the burn rate, we, uh, we're predicting, but we're looking at raising around uh, earlier on. So even before the summer, we're considering it because we see that the partnership proposition is uh, getting a lot of traction and um, we want to deviate from actually uh, requiring us to get consultants in-house to actually empowering them to do their job better. Mm -hmm. And if you did raise before the summer, how much would you target to raise? Yeah. So between two and three million euros. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And... Um, what would sort of the story be? In other words, obviously you need to manage dilution. So in order to get whatever, a 10, 20 million valuation, uh, what story do you think you have to tell? Yeah, I think our story is now that we show very strong traction with the consulting proposition. And what makes that unique is that every consultant signs on an average of three new customers each month, which then become our customers. So the growth compounds. Well, we sell to one uh, consultant. That means that every month we'll get three new customers signed up. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, that is very strong. Uh, that, makes, benefits. that makes a lot of sense. Of the six people on your team, how many are engineers? Uh, two are engineers, uh, uh, and they're actually offshore in Poland. Um, and the funding that we would raise during our, pre -se our seed round uh, would be to get engineering in house as much as possible. Uh, is the Poland team an outsourced engineering firm? Uh, no, actually, those are direct hires, but we started as uh, on an agency basis. Uh, but we believe that to scale fast and to take these first steps, we need to have a local team uh, that is able to bridge the gap between us and the offshore engineering team. You had an agency before this, or you started your engineering team via an engineering agency? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, the second part. The second one. Okay, got it. Yeah. Which agency did you work with? 
uh, CBT services. And they're much C- recommended, to be honest. They're great. C- CBT services? CVT. Spell like it. Valentine. Uh, Cedric Valentine uh, Theodore. Ah, services. okay, okay. CBT yeah. services based in Poland. Yeah. How'd you find them? Um, through references. Um, I've got some friends here uh, who have started their businesses and met quite some people on the way. And they were recommended by three people. I spoke with them. Um, obviously spoke with a lot of um, a lot of agencies, but they were uh, committed to making the business successful and not so much uh, trying to push hours rather than uh, deliver quality. And not so the cheapest what, around, but you get quality for what you pay for. Yeah, I mean, that was going to be my question. So like, about how much do you think you paid to have them build your MVP to the point where you could sell your first customer, you think? I think about 20K, which was quite affordable. Okay, yeah, that's not that's not terrible. And how long did it take them to build it? Um, matter of weeks. Oh wow, a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. And so, wh- I guess, why do you want to move now in house? Why not keep using CVT? Well, they're great, but obviously, when you serve more, uh, when they serve more customers, there's a bottleneck in how fast you can move. You need to. They need to take account that they need to serve more customers in a week. So. You don't have a full-time team dedicated to you. And that's the reason we decided to hire in-house. So we um, have people that can jump on every problem right away and continue building at the times that we don't have uh, issues to work on. Well, Constantius, this is a great story. I'm rooting for you. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Favorite business book. Um, let me think. I really liked uh, The Almanac of Naval. Yep. Uh, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, there's many I'm following or studying. Here in the Netherlands, there's a CEO called uh, Rene Janssen, founder of Lepaya, an upskilling uh, platform for employees. And I think he has had a j- great journey. Came from consulting, but completely pivoted into entrepreneurship. Are you going to uh, the Sassiest conference from SAS Nordic up there in, in uh, Malmo, Sweden? Um, I haven't signed up yet, but I'll have a look. Ah, very cool. All right, number three. Uh, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Um, for me, it's Figma. Figma, yeah. Number four. How many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, I try to get eight hours of sleep a night, eight. but uh, okay. obviously that's different some nights. And what's your situation? Mar- uh, married, single, kids? Um, I have a girlfriend, not married, going to move in very soon. Very cool. And how old are you? I'm 27. 27. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Oh, that's a good one. Something I wish I knew I was 20, that I would be doing this at the moment. I really have my doubts about where I was going to end up, but I'm really happy with the part that I chose. Guys, uh, he's launched greencast.io to help companies understand what their carbon footprint looks like. You connect your e-commerce platform. He looks at what products you sell and estimates. You connect your HR and he understands, wow, your employees spend a lot of time entering things in the HR system. Here's how much computer energy they're using up. Here's the carbon emission from that. Really tries to quantify all of this stuff. Got going last year in September, 2021. Now is onboarded 10 customers paying an average 400 bucks a month. They're doing about $4,000 a month in revenue. They raised $400,000 pre-seed last year to hire their first six team members at a $5 million cap, looking at potentially raising two to three million euros here in a seed round before summer. We'll see what happens. Constantinos, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you very much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments 
for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.